Wayne Patterson this morning from Anteris. Wayne, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Look, Wayne, a big week or two for Anteris in terms of uh, conference and news. Uh, just look, firstly, last week you attended TCT, the Transcatheter Cardiovascular Therapeutics Conference. Uh, this is a big deal. Just tell us a bit more about the meeting, why it's important. Right. Thanks, Andrew. So, I mean, TCT is, is anyway, one of the, the biggest clinical academic conferences of the year, particularly, as you said, transcatheter therapy, so in the bowel space especially, um, typically 10 to 15,000 delegates. Um, and what that means, of course, is that the late-breaking science, um, you know, all the new data uh, is up on, on the podiums. Um, it's an important meeting. It's also extremely well attended, uh, of course, by physicians, the U.S. analysts, the medtech analysts, um, as well as, you know, funds and, of course, industry CEOs. Uh, and industry folks. So there's just a lot of people there. And of course, everyone goes to hear the latest data um, and see what's happening. And, and there were some pivotal presentations at TCT this year that were hotly anticipated. Uh, and certainly one of them was was Duravar's EFS. Mm. And of course, the EFS, the Early Feasibility Study, uh, that was presented by the principal investigator of the study. It appears some of your metrics here, the mean gradients, the DVIs, uh, they're significantly better than current products. Uh, just tell us a bit more. Yeah, so we, I mean, we came out of this, uh, out of the European study, knowing that we we obviously had good data. And that's really a function of, you know, bringing the first new class of valve into this space in 20 years. So this valve is not like the others. It's, it's different by design. We own that design, it's biomimetic. And as a result, we get those results because of this design uh, and nobody else can because we own the IP, of course. Now. Um, because it's such a new, because it's the only new entry in 20 years, obviously folks know about it and they're anticipating the data. Uh, but even for us, I mean, what we saw on the EOAs, the mean gradients and the DVIs when matched against competitor valves were, were just next, next level. Um, an extremely important position who I can't name uh, remarked that it was unprecedented, historical. Um, and so these are, these are not throwaway lines on a product like this. What does it really mean for patients? Well, that's really something that's starting to evolve now that the regular flow, good EOAs, good mean gradients and incredible DVIs certainly will have a clinical impact that is beyond what's available to these patients today. I did have to Google this, uh, the DVI being the Doppler velocity index. What is it? How important is this as a metric? Well, well done. Um, so the DVI, so we, we often talk about mean gradients and EOAs, and mean gradient is a, a defining metric that is used for this disease state. Um, and we, we came out with mean gradients that were, were really significantly different to the other products, uh, presented that as well as the EOA, which is the effective orifice area, the opening. But the DVI is really interrelated to both those things. The velocity index um, is really a function of one. So if you look at the numbers and how to measure it, it's just the way to get your head around it. Um, if one is normal, then the DVI is a function of that. So our DVI 0.71 has just never been seen. Remembering that replacement valves are imperfect by design, right? The bioprosthetic valves are, are not anywhere close to what your native valve looks like. Duravar is a lot closer to that. Um, for example, a matched up size for size uh, Sapien valve and Edwards valve has a DVI of 0.45. All right. Now those numbers matter. Anything under 0.5 is is not fantastic to, to, to begin with, but anywhere cl as close as to one as you get, the better it is. And, and, and I heard another physician say, "Look, if you ask me which of the three valves I would uh, take, being a the Edwards valve, the Medtronic valve, and the Anteris valve, of course I would always take the valve that's closer to one on the DVI." So 0.71 is crazy. It's a crazy number. It's just not being seen with this stuff. So that has a real clinical impact as well, upstream and downstream with this disease. So critically important. But it really tells you this biomimetic valve, a normal valve is doing normal things. And that's really the secret source to how this valve functions. But we're really seeing that now in clinical practice in the U.S., as measured by core labs, you know, third parties that measure these studies, of course, not us. So it is a stunning result. It's a fantastic result. And it's not an incremental change. It's a dramatic change in how these how these products work. Wayne, can you give us a bit of an update as far as the mitral repair project? Sure. So we did actually uh, get caught up. So we've been working on the um, a mitral repair project with a with an academic collaboration. Uh, I think we discussed this last time. It's called Edge to Edge Repair. There are a couple of products out there, uh, one with Edwards, one with Abbott, called Pascal and Mitral Clip. 
Um, and they're kind of, um, rather than replacing the mitral valve, it's repairing the mitral valve through a, a certain catheter-based technology. Uh, we've taken a physician-based approach as we have with other products, so with Duravalve, a lot of physician input. Uh, there is a secret source here. It is uh, certainly dramatically different to what's available. And there's a few billion dollars in this space, but I think more importantly, we've got, I think, what is a viable clinical solution. So there's been a lot of progress made. We met with that team, with the engineers, with physicians. We had everyone together at TCT, so it was a good time to get caught up uh, on the last day. And I was really um, very impressed with the progress that's being made there. So one to watch out for, um, obviously the main event, here is Duravar, but we're certainly moving forward very quickly with our edge to edge repair product as well. I suppose, Wayne, what's what's the feedback been from industry peers about your data? Yeah, so as I said earlier, with TCT, you have, you know, everybody there, um, and it's interesting because I met uh, uh, two, three weeks ago in Minneapolis. Three of the four uh, med techs um, and had long meetings, a couple of lunches. With, with the folks at those different companies that we talked to regularly and discussed our product. And here I was two, three weeks later meeting uh, them again. Um, and, you know, the obviously the feedback, when you've got data that's never been seen, you're going to get great feedback. I mean, that's where we are. There's no disputing uh, why we're getting this data. It's a function of that, you know, that biomimetic design. Uh, and so there is a lot of discussions. Now, most of these folks we we know well and been in discussion for some time. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, you, you start to move forward, I think, dramatically when the EFS gets read out. So, of course, everyone's congratulatory. Uh, you know, everyone's saying all the right things to us. Um, and the physicians are talking in between the companies as well. So there's just a lot of noise around Anteras. Um, I don't want to give too much away, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's it's certainly... We're up there. We're very well known. The big companies know about us and, and they acknowledge data is clinically viable, therefore commercially viable at the same time. Um, I'll, and I'll leave it there with that one. I suppose, Wayne, of course, worth touching on. Uh, you raised some cash recently at market. How was that received by investors? Right. So coming out of the um, the EFS and the, and the TCT presentation um, and in what I would say is very, very challenging markets for everybody, but certainly, uh, and I mean globally, not just the ASX, but biotech and medtech is really having a tough time out there. Um, to be able to raise it market, I think is just testimony to the quality of the data and to how people see this investment thesis. Now, people have heard me talk about net present value of the company. It's, it's a hardcore math model that I used at Roche and Merck. It's not a Mickey Mouse number. Um, and it is significantly higher than the current market cap. Uh, and that's just a function of being in a very big space with a very competitive product that is highly de-risked at this point. So the MPV is quite big. Uh, and so I think people do realize that, you know, as much as our share price has been okay the last few years, that there is a lot of upside um, and it will get there. Uh, when you've got a market cap that is, you know, to some extent a little bit undervalued to the net present value, and you're operating in a market of US $10 billion, and you've got a product that is clinically superior and, and can demonstrate that, I think everybody can see the upside. So raising capital, you know, I'm always grateful and appreciative uh, of our supporters. And uh, obviously, a lot of our current base came in on that raise, but uh, pretty straightforward for us these days, I think, uh, with regards to uh, what's driving the investment thesis, which is, you know, this data. And we're not, you know, miles from market. Uh, and we're not billions of dollars from market as well. So everything is within our grasp at this point. And November within our grasp also. That's coming up coming up tomorrow. Uh, a strong year 2023 for Anteras, Wayne, with clinical progress. Uh, what's your view on looking back on the year and what's coming up for Anteras? You know, I, I feel like I say this a lot, but um, it, it has really been a historical year. I mean, we, we really... You know, this wasn't the first year we were in humans, but we've, we've gotten to humans as a company very, very quickly. And when I reflect back to the Admetus days, um, you know, it was a drug company and had a distribution business where we had no IP around any of these products. And we had this one little gem, which was the Adapt Material, and that platform gave us everything else. And, um, you know, and th thank goodness, because, you know, this company was certainly close to the edge a few times prior to that because it just wasn't a great investment thesis. So I look at this year where we really uh, crystallized that investment thesis, doing this US study, getting these patients, getting the support we've got from physicians at the highest level, um, really, you know, shows that the company has matured to an extent where this is a very viable product with a great investment thesis for folks, either today or coming in tomorrow. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, with 
such a significant upside on the market cap to the net present value, just a fair value. Um, you can you can come in tomorrow and not buy a single share and you're still going to make money on the way through here. So it's been a great year. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit more to go. Um, we didn't mention Valve and Valve, but that's really going well as well. And that's, that's the, uh, I guess, the one to watch. Uh, I don't want to make any firm commitments right now because we just need more patience to see how that goes. But it does look really good for patients from where I sit. And again, a function of this, this normal Valve. Uh, so a lot to be happy about, a lot to be proud of. Uh, and a lot more to do, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I think, you know, as we come into London Valve, which is the next big meeting in November, we're going to be presenting our 30 day data for the EFS as a late breaker. And that's great. Um, and then I think it's uh, pretty much all upside as far as I can see between now and uh, and getting into our pivotal studies. Always good to speak, Wayne. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew. Pleasure.